All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Awesome. All right, everyone, welcome to the webinar, Being a Leader in Uncertain Times, presented by the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce. Before we begin today's webinar, we have a few Zoom etiquette guidelines to make this an effective meeting for all of us. All of the attendees have been muted. If you have a question, please enter it in the chat box or the Q&A box. They are both located at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You will only be able to see the presenter and his presentation. We can't see or hear you. I will send out a follow-up email with a copy of the video of this presentation, along with any links or documents discussed and the speaker contact information. Our presenter today works with business owners and their teams to elevate their performance so they can better serve their clients, their potential clients, their employees, and their communities. This is especially useful now. The landscape has shifted and being a leader for your business, for your families, and for your community has never been more called for. Today, he will be sharing with us some strategies for doing that. He lives in Temecula with his amazing wife, Peg, and his teenage sons, Seth and Daniel. He is a partner at Effective Action Counts Consulting, a leader in transformational consulting. He founded TEDx Temecula in 2012, now preparing for their ninth annual conference. He's a distinguished Toastmaster and a 10-year member of the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce. Please welcome Jim McLaughlin. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Settle down, settle down. <laughs> it's fun having fun with these Zoom meetings, you know, I'm pretending there's, it's, oh, it's a standing ovation even. Oh my gosh, well, I haven't even gotten started. Well, <laughs> thank you, Brooke. And, uh, and thanks to the Temecula Chamber of Commerce for, for putting on this series so that we can all learn and grow during this time of, uh, well, this time of change. Right, and so my, it's my uh, my privilege, my pleasure, to to share with some to share with you some of the the tools, the techniques, the strategies that I use with my clients, and I'm using in my own life right now because I'm dealing with with change as well as, of course, we all are, and uh, to to give you a leg up, to give you an access to uh, having things go having things go the way you want them to go. Uh, yeah, it may sound weird, right? But, but you have an intention, you have a desire. And, and the, the program is called Being a Leader in Uncertain Times. And you know, one of the questions that often comes up is, well, what is it to be a leader? What does it mean? What does leader and, and leadership mean? And in the introduction, Brooke mentioned, well, you're, you can be a leader in your family, you're a leader in your community, you're a leader of your business, and you're, you're a leader of your own life or a leader in your own life, if, should you choose to be. You could be the leader of your own life. And, uh, and many times that's called for, and many times we can throttle back a little bit and let other, uh, let other people lead. I was really struck, as most of us were probably around the same time, early in March when, I think the first thing that I heard was, that, that really got me was that the NBA was canceling their season. My son told me that, and I thought, wow. That's a big deal. And then I think the next day, all the other, very seemingly the next day, all of the other um, sports uh, organizations were, were canceling. And I started to get the sense of the, you know, the shutting down of the economy, if you will. And it, it was, it was a little bit frightening, right? So, cause you know, the economy, I, I still have scars from the last slowdown. I'm not ready to, to go through another one. Uh, I have still haven't recovered fully. So it was very, um, it was alarming. It was, it was, it concerned me greatly. And uh, when I noticed, when I looked around, I saw, you know, what, what, what inspired me was the opportunity or not the opportunity, but what inspired me was sort of the need for leadership. And I don't mean the president or the governor or, you know, various agencies, but your leadership, all of our individual leadership, because people are, I'm unsure about what's going to happen. I, I like to say that 
you know, people are looking for leadership. They don't know that they're looking for leadership, but they respond to it. Everybody wants to know that everything is going to be okay. If not know it, like have that feeling, you know, like, oh, okay, everything's, we're going to get through this. Everything's going to be okay. And then they can kind of, you know, get back to work, get that back to the tasks at hand of caring, caring for others. Because one of the things that happens when we're, um, when we're caught up in our own concerns is our world starts to shrink. Perhaps you've noticed that if you've ever been, um, if you, of course you have been, but uh, I re recognize it when I've been ill. You probably notice it when you've been ill. It's suddenly, it really becomes all about, kind of all about you, you know, and dealing with it. And maybe for some of us more than others. I know I'm a big baby when I get sick. So <laughs> it's all about, I'm mad, I'm upset. Well, I don't have time for this and all of that. But the world kind of contracts. So um, when we look out for opportunities to lead, or at least that's what I saw, that's when things really started to open up open up for me. So I want to walk you through uh, three key areas of where and how to be a leader or to elevate your leadership in areas that are important to you. So that's really the first place I want to start is like, look for yourself. What does it mean to be a leader? What is a leader? Often we look at leadership as we look at leaders from the past because sometimes the the leaders of today aren't noticed yet because their accomplishments haven't been fully realized. You know, back in the middle of the civil rights movement, I was too young to know much about it, but Martin Luther King Jr. probably, or, or for some he was a leader, but, for, but his legacy is what we refer back to him after all these years as being, being a leader in the civil rights movement. And, and Gandhi's another great example of that of that as well and there is no coincidence they're both a um, uh, particular kind of of leader like the nonviolence uh, component um, let me share with you um, so yeah be looking for yourself what is it to be a leader who what is leadership what is a leader for me how do i be a what does leadership look like in my own world in my family in my business for myself for the community what does it look like to be a leader i know it's an abstract question this is an opportunity for discovery of looking and seeing what's there. Let me find my pen here. There it is. I'm going to give you a little diagram of one of the ways that I think about, I think about leadership. And I share this quite often with my clients, not necessarily in the context of leadership, but really in the context of change. Because that's really in a large part, what's going on right now is we're, we're, things are changing. The world has changed, perhaps you've noticed. So this is an exercise for you to take a look at something for yourself and see if this, see if this maps onto your own, uh, perhaps, experience of life. Okay, I'm going to draw this circle here. And consider that this circle represents your world. I know it's not a perfect circle. Get over it. <laughs> it's, uh, if, if I can get over it. No. It, um, this circle represents your world. So I'm gonna put your world, but add, just put your own name on there, your world. And this is your world. You're, 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 you operate very well in that world. You're, you're capable in that world. You're successful in that world. Your world isn't perfect. There's things you're still working on or things that, that aren't going as well as you'd like them to, but for, by and large, you're, you're functional, capable. You've, you've mastered that world in large part. How do I know? Because you probably wouldn't be here right now if you hadn't mastered your world. You'd be, you know, you'd be busy doing something else or, or consumed by something else or you wouldn't be as successful as you are. You wouldn't be, I could go on, right? But just consider that this is your world and that you're very capable um, in that world. And the reason you're capable or how you became capable in that world was from everything that you've learned, uh, what you learned in school, what you learn from your parents, what you learn from the culture in which you were raised, from your religious upbringing, uh, you learn from your experiences, you learn from your successes and from your failures, you learn from the internet, you learn, you learn, you learn. It, so you could say that that world, your success in that world is based upon everything that you've come to know. It's all from what you learned in the past, right? And what you continue to learn and you continue to master your world. So everything in that world, you're successful in that world because that world is known to you. 
right? It's known to you. I know how to be successful. I know how to drive a car. I know how to speak English. I know how to do my, my job. I know how to be successful at that. Again, yeah, there's rough spots. There's areas for opportunity and growth, but by and large, you've mastered that. Okay, so the question then becomes, all right, if this is your world, if this is what's known to you, what is all this outside of your world? What, is all, what would you call that? If this is what's known, what's this? That's right, it's the unknown. I could hear you through the internet, right? That's the unknown. This is what's known, or this is what's known. That's what's, that's what's unknown, right? And what do you notice about the difference between the known and the unknown? Well, the unknown's a lot bigger, right? There's more that you don't know than, there's, than there is that you know, right? There's more experiences out there that you haven't had than there are experiences that you've had. But what do you know, what else do you know about the unknown? What is your relationship to the unknown? What is it like to face the unknown? Nine out of 10 people use this word. It's scary. About half of the one that's left, 5%, will say it's opportunity, right? And, uh, but nine out of 10 in my, in my informal polling say that it's scary, right? And that's kind of what we're dealing with right now. We're dealing with a lot of unknown and people are running scared. Perhaps you've had that experience yourself. I, I certainly have, as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned earlier. But where I work with my clients is, you know, operating in this world is good. It's fine. You're successful in that world. But every once in a while, we have a yearning for something more. And we, we're, we're navig navigating around in our world, and we get a glimpse of something outside our world, uh, you know, like an opportunity or, or, uh, or like the opportunity to grow our business or to open a new office or to bring a new product to market or to offer a new service. And then, you know, we, 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 then we encounter something like this perhaps, and then we go back and we, you know, it comes around again and, and uh, it, I, I got, I, I'm just going to put that on the back burner and, and, and deal with it later. So I work with people when they're ready to break free of this or when conditions have changed and it's necessary to be able to navigate in the unknown. The more power you have to navigate in the unknown, not knowing how things are gonna turn out, the more power you have in situations like we're dealing with today. Sometimes the unknown is something you cause to happen, and this is the zone of leadership. Right? Leadership is, I don't know how it's gonna turn out, <laughs> right? Because it wouldn't be leadership if somebody had already paved the way for me, right? That would be following, not leading. Consider that leadership is being able to navigate in the unknown. I have a couple of definitions for leadership I, I like to use. A leader, is someone that, uh, a leader is someone who has something happen that wasn't going to happen anyway, All right? Like starting a business, right? That was something that wasn't gonna happen anyway. It took leadership to get your business up and running. Another aspect is a leader is someone who can be with anyone in any situation under any circumstances and still be powerful in the face of that situation. What I mean by powerful, I mean you, you're able to see what's needed for that situation, unencumbered by whatever there is that may be confronting to you or, or scary to you or unknown to you. Again, the unknown brings about often that kind of an, that kind of an experience. Why is the unknown scary? Why would it be that way that the unknown is scary? Well, I think it's because nature favors the cautious. Right? If you're wandering around, you know, prehistoric times and you're hungry and you're on a hunt, you're hungry, you're looking for something to eat and there's a fruit tree over there. Oh, there's fruit. Maybe I should, no, but I don't recognize that fruit. Huh? Well, nature favors the people that say, I'm not going to eat what I don't know because it might kill me and then it's over. I can be hungry a little bit longer and then maybe I'll find something that I do know and I can eat that. Now, in our day and age, those kinds of scenarios don't happen very often, but the unknown still brings, brings about that kind of an experience, that kind of uh, fear, that kind of avoidance, that kind of hesitation, all of which keep us in the world of the known, staying with where we know. But guess what happened over the last month? We're all thrust into this unknown zone. 
everybody all at once, right? And so what do you do when you're in the unknown? I don't know, you might do things that, you might see people do things that don't make any sense, like hoarding toilet paper, right? That's a reaction to what's going on for them, right? Oh my gosh, they're all buying toilet paper. Maybe I should go buy toilet paper too. <laughs> I wonder how many of that, how many of that was going on. I, somebody may have already discussed that or, or studied that. Imagine that, studying that, but it's, it's curiosity for me. All right, so this is what we're looking at right now. And for some, for many, like, like try this on for yourself, just knowing that what's bothering me is that I don't know how it's gonna turn out. That can provide some freedom right there. It's like, what's going on? I'm just uh, paralyzed, right? Or I'm concerned. Well, what is that? Well, maybe it's just, oh, I'm just, I just don't know how it's gonna turn out. I right? just labeling your fear can provide some, some relief to you, uh, to you from it. Uh, which then allow you to get back to work. I mean, you know, back to the work of life, whatever, whatever needs to be done for yourself, for your family, for your business, for the community, in any area, any context in which you see leadership is needed. In, or, yeah, where, where leadership would make a difference, right? Okay. What else did I want to say about that? So, so continue to look, if, you're, um, if you haven't identified them already, where am I a leader in my life? Where can I be a leader? Where is leadership called for? And that's part of the process we're going to be, um, we're going to be uh, working through. Let's see, just checking my notes here, make sure I covered um, anything. So the other thing about, about this unknown zone is, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's really unlimited as to what's, what's in the unknown. So what's available to you in an unlimited arena is what? Everything right? So your ability to navigate in the unknown is going to provide you with things like that you will, and this is what I'll, you know, I'll hear clients say to me, is you won't believe what happened. And I think, well, yeah, I will, <laughs> because this is what happens. It's a, uh, it's a surprise to them because it's not in the world of what they know. It's in the world of what they don't know. And that's where the surprises and the miracles and the aha moments happen is in this area um, of the unknown. Not exclusively, but you follow me, right? Like this is where you going after something and having amazing things show up is, um, is golden, right? It's powerful. All right, so that's a concept or a conceptual uh, uh, image I wanna leave you with or, the, or have you get that, okay, this is my world. This is the world that's known to me. I'm, I'm comfortable in this world. And you know, also adding to that, that it's all been taken away from us. Our, we're now in a different world, correct? Now, not everything's different, but enough things are different that it's like being in a new world. And we, ne we may never get the old world back. It may never go back to being the way that it was, at least all of it, right? And I mean, it's an invitation. This is an invitation to you to take advantage of this opportunity right now. And I'll be going through that uh, as we move forward, being a leader in, during uncertain times. And here's a tip. Times are always uncertain, always. You may not wake up tomorrow. That's, it's not a certainty that you will. But we go through life like the future is certain, like things are laid out for us, that tomorrow is going to be pretty much like today and next year is going to be pretty much like last year, only a little different or maybe a lot different, but substantially the same. Now we don't have that. Now it's unknown. It's all been that future that what we expect to happen has all been, been taken away, right? And so the more we can be powerful in the face of that, the more benefit will be to ourselves and those around us, leaders, the more we'll be leaders. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off and go back. Um, uh, well, just go back to me, hi. Uh, so, great. So, you being a leader in the various areas of your life, you recognizing that, wow, the future is uncertain and what do I do with that? How do I be a leader in these, in these uncertain times? Okay, step one. Identify your own concerns, right? Like I mentioned before, when you identify, all right, what is really on my, like what's bothering me? What, what's, what are my concerns? And you may not have concerns every moment, but, and this is where this applies to not just now, but any situation you're dealing with that is a call for leadership, anything that is difficult, anything that you don't already have an answer to how to solve, right? Uh, an area where leadership may be required. Thinking outside the box is another, another way to say that, or getting outside of your comfort zone are all uh, similar ways of saying getting outside of your world, right? So 
what is it that is concerning me? What is my concern? So the concern I shared with you a little bit ago was, I'm concerned about the economic slowdown and the impact that's going to have on everyone. Now, that my perspective was um, uh, you know, not to diminish or invalidate people that are really suffering with the virus. But in my world at the time, the virus was not a concern for me. It's not, it's not affecting any of my family members. Uh, my concern was the future of, of, my, of my lifestyle, if you will, my family, right? Like my well-being uh, and what I would have to deal with that I don't want to have to deal with. Like, you know, just all the, all the nightmare scenarios that some of you have probably seen or been exposed to. Anyway, that was what was on my mind. So it became for me, like being ill, like, oh my gosh, it's, you know, it's, it's all about me, or not that it's all about me, but it was very internalized, right? So before we can be leaders in any situation, we got to identify, what am I concerned about here? So a common business scenario is I have to, you know, um, reprimand an employee, or I have to, uh, uh, you know, let go of, of, of somebody. Right. And so that presents a situation of what? I don't know how it's going to turn out. And then what's right there is maybe, and it's not for everybody, but I think you can identify with it. Uh, it may not turn out well. Like, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Therefore, it probably won't turn out well. Now, we don't do this consciously, right? It's below our level of awareness. It's just there. And again, it may not turn out well. Is that cautious part of our nature? of, well, maybe I can deal with that later. And then we end up procrastinating and, and, and like that. So um, identifying your concerns. Oh, I'm just concerned that it won't go well. Okay, well, what? Can I, can I, can I set that aside? So that's the next step in that. What are my concerns? Get those concerns. Like, what is it really? Because sometimes we don't know. Sometimes it's like there's this dark cloud over it. So it's more like a feeling but it's all tied up in language, right? There's language to it. There's an actual like sentence and grammar to what it is that you're concerned about. And when you get it, then you can set it aside. I, I say you, you, can, you can objectify it, like you can hold it out here. Oh, there's my, there's my fear of the unknown. Okay, let me just set that aside for a moment and get some clarity. Because when you have your concern between you and what you're dealing with, it's like, you know, it's a barrier. It's like a filter. You don't see the entire situation for what it is. So by identifying and articulating your, your, your concerns, your worries, your fears, and just call them concerns to capture that whole world, then I can set it aside, okay? So that's the first step is identify your own concerns and set them aside. Next step is to look around. Right, so I've set aside my concerns and now I'm looking around. Okay, this is a different world. So imagine waking up one morning and you're not where you thought, they're not, you're not where you were when you went to bed the night before. You're in a different bed, you're in a different house. How did I get here? You would, you would start looking around like what? Now, now some people, might be terrified of that situation, pull the sheets up over their head and think, I must be dreaming, I must be having a nightmare. But imagine yourself in that scenario, just for the sake of this discussion, you'd look around and you'd start to piece together where in the world, are? you'd look out the window, okay, well, there's different foliage out there than there is in my hometown, right? It's, there's ice everywhere, or, you know, it's very, you would be curious about that world. You would be learning about, about that world. Alice in Wonderland uh, comes to mind at the story that I'm not that familiar with, but in, in light of this, I, I did a little bit of research and Alice was a very curious person. She was exploring this new world that made no sense to her. It all began with, oh, look at that. There's a white rabbit over there and he's got a watch. What? <laughs> so the world made no sense. World made that part of the world made no sense to her, and then she went down the rabbit hole, and then the whole story unfolded. For many of you, know this story obviously better than I do. And then these unusual, she began began to try and understand uh, understand that world. So that's the next invitation. That's the ex invitation to you: is what is it about this new world? I, obviously, okay. There's the coronavirus. That's that's going on, and there's the you know the the stay at home 
things. Uh, I wonder what, and, and then there's, you know, gosh, it looks like, you know, there's businesses closing down. And what about other people that are working at restaurants and this, like, like looking around and seeing what's going on now and what are the concerns of others, right? What are the concerns of other people and why that's important? Because, you know, I, I, I see it as, um, you know, we're in business for one. If you think of it this way, the most important aspect of your business is that you're serving people. If you weren't providing a service for people, they wouldn't be giving you money to provide that service, right? So we're all providing, and I think most of you probably get that. I'm, I'm here to serve, right? It may not be the way that you thought when you were younger, but at some point it becomes about, you know, for me to get what I want, this is the Zig Ziglar quote, right? For me to get everything in life I want, I've got to give everything, I've got to give other people everything that, that they want to be of service to others. Well, you're still going to do that. And so by looking around, you get to see, you get to discover what there is to discover about this new world to see where those needs are because the needs may have changed. When Henry Ford made automobiles affordable, the people that were making buggy whips, probably heard this analogy before, their days were numbered. So that was a disruption. If you're familiar with the, you know, there's a business term of a disruptive technology, right? The iPhone changed everything, at least in terms of phones. It may not be completely disruptive, but it, it made a real shift. The automobile was a disruptive technology that pulled people away from their horses, right? So if you're in the buggy whip business, you better start finding a new business or make boutique buggy whips, <laughs> something like that, right? Um, so looking on and seeing what's out there, what does this new world look like? And one of the things that happens to us as we've gotten older, by and large, not for everybody, is that we've forgotten how to discover. We don't remember how to discover. We've become so uh, familiar with the world that we know that there's very little left to discover. And when we venture out of our world, discovery comes with risk because you may not like what you see. So maybe I'll just stay, I'll stay in my world, I'll stay in my comfortable world. And, uh, and it, it's fine, I'll be fine, right? It's fine. Maybe there's, some, maybe there's some things that I'm not gonna have, you know, maybe I'll have to put some of my dreams on hold or, or give them up, but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then you get to the end of your, you know, your life and, and then they put on your tombstone, he was fine. You know, he, he lived a fine, fine life. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like there, it takes something to put yourself at risk to have a new experience, to have something, um, something amazing happen that you are responsible for. Again, going back to leadership, leadership is something that you um, that you cause. I see things going on in my old chat window over here, and I'm I'm kind of ignoring them because I don't want to get distracted by them. Hopefully, I have time at the end that I can answer questions for you and uh, and refer to some of the some of the comments. But I was telling Brooke at the beginning if I veer over there to, I'll forget where I was was going um, and uh, like I just did <laughs> so it's identif it's looking around and seeing what what's out there here's something that happened happened to me in a meeting uh, early last month when I was talking with uh, um, uh, some of my networking partners uh, it was again around that time where things really became apparent we're all thrown out of the the world that we know uh, all together in, in 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 many senses and he said something like, well, we, we should not be selling right now. We, we should not be selling. It would be inappropriate. It's insensitive and all that. And it hit me like, wait a minute. You should never be selling, right? And this is going back, really tying back to the service um, conversation. You should, be a, you should be providing a service, right? I, I put this part before I, I really intended to, but you should never be just selling, right? You're calling people. You're engaging with people to find out what their needs are so that you can be of service. And you're not gonna stop doing that. You're still going to be calling and finding out how people are and what their needs are. Whether you can provide that need or not, you're providing service to people. And this is a part of discovering what it is that's out there in this new world that you can make a difference for. And if not directly, you can make a difference for that person by connecting with them with the need that they have or yeah, connecting with somebody who can provide the need, the service that they have. So the first two tips were to identify your own concerns 
Like really get clear on that. And that's not always easy to do by yourself. Okay, let me add that part. Because it's, again, it's below your level of awareness. So this is something I do with my clients. I'd be happy to go through a process uh, like that with you. I'm gonna give you my contact information at the end so you can just call me up or set a time uh, in my schedule with me so we can go into this a little bit more deeply. Um, identifying your own concerns. Uh, oh yeah, so talking with somebody, it doesn't have to be me, it could be somebody else, uh, um, or journaling on it. I've become a big fan of journaling in the last six months and I have made discoveries just in my journaling. So taking the time to think deeply and, and focused in on what, what those things may be. Again, that happens in one-on-one -on -one conversations, but it can also happen in journaling because if you don't set the concern aside again it'll, it'll be in the way so identifying your own concerns looking around you've woken up into a new world what is going on here wow i, I better learn this new world because there may be a new opportunity in this world uh that i uh there may be a new opportunity in this world period and and i'm out to find it i guess is the the part of that i'm interested in finding what that opportunity is for myself for myself and for my communities. Um, again, not to make it all about, all about you. Okay, identify your own concerns, look around, and then given what you see, given what you see when you look around, what are you called to do? Okay, that, what does that mean? You know, what am I called to do? Well, you know you have this experience of, of seeing an opportunity, seeing something, looking at the landscape, and being called to do something. So there's, there's, there's a compulsion, there's, a, there's a, a desire, whatever, you know, those kinds of words come up for that, that have you want to, want to actually like take a stand for something. And that's, that's part of this world is, or part of this, this distinction of given what you see, what are you called to, what are you called to do? Now again, it's gonna take some looking around and some discovery to find out what that is. So you'll see those opportunities. What am I called to do? So I was called when I looked around about elevating leadership for the community. Again, from that notion of when I look around, I see people reacting and, not, and I see them reacting to other people's reactions. That's not good, right? If I'm reacting to what other people's reactions are, that's gonna create sort of a chain reaction of you know, people acting strangely, people maybe not doing things in their own best interest, people not doing things in the community's best interest, right? So then it, it, in all of that, what emerged was, I need to call on everybody to be a leader in this time, whatever that looks like, right? That's the stand that I'm taking, is that everybody elevates their own leadership for the people that are around them. And there's, for me, there's an elegance in that. And I'm not waiting for Washington to do something, although they have a job to do. I'm not waiting for the governor to do something, although he has a job to do. And I'm not, you know, all the way down to what is it that I can do? What is it that we can do to serve our community, to have us all not just get through this, but actually, you know, have some areas of our lives and of our businesses be better than they were before. And I don't mean I can now do things on Zoom instead of meeting a face-to-face. -face. That's not very significant. Now, it's nice, it's a shortcut, and maybe I'll start, and I'll do, start doing some things that way, but it's not gonna be, it's not a transformation, right? It's not a disruptive technology in a sense. We're still not, we're, we're still gonna meet for coffee, and I can't wait, <laughs> right? So look at what there is to take a stand for, like what you're called to do, what can I take a stand for? And, and I'm not, you know, and again, it's looking at where are you a leader? I'm not asking you to go out and change the world. But if that's what you see to take a stand for, I invite you to do that. I invite you to look at what is it like to embark on that, on that program, on that, on that course of action. Be willing to take a stand for something. So being willing to is the first step and then taking the stand is the, is the second step, right? Like what is there that I could take a stand for? What am I willing to take a stand for? And then that may be where you, where you, you, you put that on pause for a moment. And then the next step is who do I need to be to take that stand? Who, who do I need to be? Who do I, this is another discovery. What is called for 
for me to, to, to be the person that does that, right? We see people doing heroic acts, right? You know, and other, like, you know, people rushing into to, to burning buildings to save a cat, right? Well, there's something they took on a way of being that had them do that, right? There was something that they were call, certainly called to do and they pulled within, from within themselves the beingness of this is for me to do. Right? Again, now this is not, there's not, uh, there may not be an immediate answer. This is again a discovery of given what's going on right now, given the world that I see, where do I want to make an impact? That's another way to look at what do I want to take a stand for? Where do I want to make an impact? And many of you got into your business for pretty much that very reason. You wanted to impact something. You wanted to make a difference in a particular area. You took a stand for it. And then you became the person you had to be to go to college or whatever it was, or start a business, or you know, there were, there were hoops to jump through. There were challenges that you had to face to become the person you are today. And this is not much different than that, right? This is a reinvention. Right. This is an opportunity to reinvent who you are or what you're about or what you're up to or how you're serving the world now. And even if the world goes back to exactly the way that it was before, what you learn in this process is going to have value for you. Guaranteed. As much as I can guarantee anything. Right? You get that, right? So be willing to take a stand. See what there is to take a stand for. Be willing to take a stand for it. Discover who you are and who you are going to be. And in the discovery of that, you might notice gaps. Like, well, I'm not very good at that. Or I've never done that before. Like, I don't know. Uh, that's so different from what I'm used to doing. And that's okay. It's identifying where those gaps are and how to fill those gaps. So the three traditional ways of, of filling gaps, and, and by gaps, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to do that right? Or I don't know how to be that, right? Like, I don't know how, that is something that I don't feel equipped as a, as a, as a person, right? You could call it, I don't have the courage to do that, or I don't have, that's just not me, right? That may be how it, it shows up. It's just not like me to do that. I'm, I'm shy. I'm an introvert. This is an experience that I had of my, of my former self, but it still shows up from time to time, right? And I've really given up being an introvert in this environment, let me tell you. <laughs> um, so what are those gaps? Areas where you don't feel equipped to deal with the situation. And there's three typical ways of filling those gaps. Um, uh, well, uh, let me say it a, di a different way. One way you might fill those gaps is by hiring somebody, right? To, to fill that gap. Somebody, somebody that already knows how to do that. Um, another aspect or access rather to, to filling that gap is learning for yourself. So getting the training that you need. Many people have gotten training, probably all of you have gotten some training on how to use Zoom. Right, so now I can do this. Now I am I'm capable of, of being in a Zoom meeting and maybe at some point I'll be capable of hosting a Zoom meeting, right? So looking for where are those gaps? So the, the three methods for filling gaps, aside of hiring somebody, you may not have that option right now, is training, mentoring, and coaching, right? Training typically has to do with skills and knowledge, learning a skill, adding to your knowledge. And those, that's pretty easy to do right now, uh, these days. Uh, because everything you ever wanted to know how to do is on the internet, right? On, on YouTube. So skills and knowledge uh, training uh, for most things or for many things is available. It's easily accessible. So you can get the training that you need. Mentoring. What is mentoring? Mentoring for me is finding somebody that's walked that path before and is willing to help you walk down that path as well. Sharing with you the pitfalls, share, sharing with you uh, the, the mistakes that they've made, what to watch out for, what to add. Uh, what to learn about and again training might be might fall into that be something that you learn from a mentor um, and also making connections for you in that world that they're in right because they're in a different world and you want to be part of that world you want to add that element of that world to your own if that makes sense excuse me and then the coaching component and for me the coaching component is where is, is really the leadership aspect when you decide or in, in circumstances where you decide i've learned enough uh, maybe I'm not doing everything that I've, I've learned. And that's often a, a scenario that comes up for me with my potential clients is, well, I know what to do. I'm just not doing it. Right. Okay, great. Well, there's something in the way of that. Right. So, so, so coaching 
for me comes in, at least in the way that I think of an approach coaching is that you're ready to blaze a trail of your own, right? You've got your own unique mission. You've got your own calling, your own stand and who you are. And there's just being that guide into the unknown that will help you create the pathway to this vision of what it is that you're taking a stand for the way that you want to serve. Right. So as I mentioned, the discovery process is something we're not very familiar with. So coaching, one of the aspects of coaching is helping you to discover things that given your own sense of who you are, right. It, it can be difficult to notice. We don't often notice aspects of ourselves. We're just, we're just who we are. Right? So a coach can reflect back on you, well, have you thought about it this way? Have you thought about it that way? What about this or what about that? Um, in shorthand, that's what I'm saying. So um, looking for where are those gaps and then finding ways to fill those gaps so that you are, you are ready to take that on. And you might do that along the way. You ought to do that along the way because what you actually need training for, what you actually need coaching for, it may come, off, it may come up in different ways and in different times along your journey, um, which brings up the next aspect of it, which is, all right, I've, I've got my calling. I, I, I have a sense of maybe I know who I need to be. And again, that is something I'd be happy to work with you on in a phone conversation to help you get a little closer to discovering that for yourself. Um, but what's the plan? My right, part of being in the unknown is I don't, I've never been on, in this, on this road before. This is a, I'm in unfamiliar territory. There are no roads and you get to, as I said, blaze the trail. So having a, a plan and, and here's the thing about plans, especially in situations like this. Well, how do I know if this plan is going to work? You don't. Remember, the future is uncertain. It always has been. It always will be. But you have a vision. You have a direction you want to go. You have the resources available to you or you know resources are out there that you can tap into creating that plan down to what do I, so that it gets down to what do I need to do today to get to that? It's that, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? If you've ever heard that before, well, what that means is you've got, you've broken it down into well, what, I, what do I need to do to get started? Okay. So having that, having that plan in place will, will get you, get you in motion. So parts, the parts of, uh, this third uh, section that I'm talking about, given what you see, what are you called to do? What do you call, what do you see? What, are, what am I willing to explore? It may not even be that clear to you yet. Right. But again, in sort of in getting on that road and going down that road, things will start to look different. The worst thing you can do is stand still because the view never changes when you're standing still. But when you take one, one step, the view changes slightly and you take another step, it changes a little bit more. You see, th see things that you weren't able to see before because you were back here standing still. Okay. Uh, so that's where the plan part of it comes in. So what am I willing to take a stand for that, that the world is a better place, right? you know, in some way in your own special way or your own unique way. Let me put it that way. Uh, who do I need to be? Like what is a way of being that, that is needed of me in this situation? Well, certainly some courage. Uh, it probably helps out everybody in the area of being in the unknown and being with the scary situations or that, that sense of, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Looking for the gaps, identifying how to fill those gaps and having a, having a plan to get moving forward. And that's also where a mentor or a coach can help you with the, you know, the sort of the accountability portion or, you know, tell me what you're going to do this week or, you know, an accountability partner that, that could, that could help out as well. All of these things are, are something that are, um, useful for you on thriving or coming out of this, if not thriving, at least it's with something new, some new way to operate your business in a way that is, you know, that is going to be adaptable or not ad adaptable, but applicable. That's the word to the current world and the current situation. Um, let's see. That's most of, I mean, that's, that's, those are the basic three things or the three areas I want you to focus on is getting your own, identifying your own concerns, setting them aside um, so that your attention is not pulled towards your own internal concerns, looking around and identifying what the concerns are of others, looking for where service is needed. It may not be in the places that, they ha that it has been, 
there are certainly new needs out there. There are new new areas have opened up in which to serve people. And if you're if you're staying in what you know, those won't be visible to you. They'll be visible to your competition that decides to take that to take that route. So if uh, if you're in competition with other people in your field, have that be a motivator for you. The people that get out in front of this, or the people that are looking for the innovation, are gonna are gonna do better. Are gonna be ahead of the game from now on, right? Until the next disruptive technology or disruption to our environment um, comes along, as it will as it will. And that's why these leadership principles are so important because this will happen on a large scale or a small scale at some point in the future. Okay, I wanna tell you a little bit, um, so I, I do wanna, I do have an opera, you know, I, I put together a program or I am putting together a program where we can work on these things um, in, 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 over time in a, you know, a weekly or bi-weekly basis. I'm still putting it together, but I just wanna, and I'm not prepared to, to give it to you here, but I do want you to reach out to me if this is something that you'd like to that you'd like to work on, and hopefully you'll be in touch in other ways that you'll know about it. Even if you don't, uh, don't reach out to me. It's really about um, inventing your reinventing your business or taking a look at reinventing your business, taking a look at what does this disruption make available to me? Where's the opportunity um, in this, and then how do I how do I get that going? So here's the Here's the thing that I saw beyond just looking out and seeing where leadership is available is, is how I'm now going to be pricing my work, right? Before everything had a particular price and that's, that's what it cost. And of course there are situations where I would make exceptions. And so I'm expanding that into, um, I'm gonna have a set, uh, you know, like a price, like a value on it. And you're just gonna pay what you wanna pay. Uh, let me put a little bit of a condition on that. Well, why would I pay anything? Well, the reason is because you got to have some skin in the game. Now, you know that if you don't have any skin in the game, it's not going to make much of a difference, right? You can come to workshops and you've done this and you go and you come away with a little tip or technique, but you didn't have any skin in the game to make sure that it happened, right? So you get to decide what the skin in the game is. That's my new, that's my pivot for the new, uh, the, new, uh, the new world that, that we're living in. Because I don't want to exclude people, especially now, from, from really pushing their leadership ability, for pushing them into new frontiers, for having them be more capable in the unknown zone, right? Because again, the future is uncertain. It always has been. It's just now it's up in our face, right? Or it's in our face on those occasions in our normal world and we just don't have any, any power in those environments. Like when we have to confront somebody because we're so, you know, we don't want to look bad or we don't want to make people upset, right? Well, generally, I mean, maybe not across the board uh, or uh, across all situations for you, but you've probably had a sense of that might get in your way from time to time. And I'm not advocating being mean to people, but there's work to be done, right? And, 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 and you have a mission and, and your business is up to something, you're up to something. And sometimes we let things get in, get in the way of that. Um, that's what I have. If, if you, oh, here's, here's how to get in touch with me. And I know Brooke said she's gonna send this information out, but if you wanna get a, um, a jump start on that and just write this down anyway, um, here, here it is. Um, so the company's Effective Action Consulting. If you go to calendly.com slash Jim McLaughlin, you can set up a Zoom meeting with me. Right there, all the times that I have available. You can just, I'll get an email. The Zoom link will already be in there and we can connect this way. Or you can call me on the telephone or of course you can, uh, you can email me. But make a note of that and um, I'm available to you, uh, well, as my, calendar, as my calendar allows, right? Um, and I really invite you to, to open up what's possible for yourself in, um, in your business. Um, I know a lot of people out there are just looking for the answer. And that's mostly what, uh, what human beings are looking for. Um, and in many situations in life, there just are no answers. There's having a direction to go and then taking that next step and then taking that next step and seeing how the view changes from there. Okay. Um, thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you again to Brooke and the chamber for, for setting this up. And uh, it looks like I have a couple minutes here. Uh, is there anything in the chat that, um, that I should talk to? Have you been monitoring the chat, Brooke? Uh, 
Um, yes, and I don't see any questions right now. Okay. Okay. Well, if you have any questions, then we've got four or five minutes here. I'd love to, I'd love to address them. Okay. How about you, Brooke? Do you have any questions? <laughs> I'll put you on the spot again. <laughs> I know. Well, as a leader, we set the tone for our team. What are some ways to stay positive so it trickles down to staff right now? Okay. So say that, ask me that question again, because for a moment I thought you were going to go in a different direction. Took me out. Took me oh, out. <laughs> what are some ways we can stay positive so it trickles down to our staff right now since we set the tone? Okay, great, great, great. Okay, staying positive. How do we stay positive? Okay, well, part of that is, all right, what are my concerns? Like, what is, what is having me not be positive, right? What, what is in the way of me being positive. Okay, I'm worried, I'm concerned. Okay, what am I concerned about? And this is the discovery. You know, I used to be a geologist, and so I think of mining, right? You're digging, you're digging, you're digging, you're looking for the payload, like the, the gold, right? The, the mother load. And when you discover what that is, like, like, well, here's an example. People often say, well, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I, I'm afraid of rejection. Okay, well, that's really high level. You really need to dig down into what is it about rejection that you're afraid of, right? Or what is it about, like what's actually are you afraid of doing and what are you actually afraid that the outcome might be? I don't wanna take it too far off track, but you know, for, for some it's just a matter of, oh, I don't wanna be uncomfortable. Like really? Uh, for me, when, that, when it comes up that way to me, when I drill down, this happened to me recently with a challenge and I thought, I'm just afraid to take a risk. And I thought, wow, really? No, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, that's not who I am that I'm afraid to take a risk. And so it was easy to set that aside and then take action. So identifying like what is really going on with me? Yeah, I don't know how it's gonna go. Well, I never know how it's gonna go. And this is why I brought in, it's always uncertain. And so if that can give you like, a, a, allow you to set that aside and then you can be there and, and identify the concerns of others. You can listen for the concerns of others. Because most people, when, you ha when they have the concerns, it's just like you having a concern. Your, 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 your world gets small, right? You're concerned with really your own survival at some level or the survival of the lifestyle that you have, right? And your concern is all interior. So being positive is letting go of that, even if only for a few moments, right? To, to raise the needle. And also I would, I would add that with your team, like acknowledge that. I've got my own concerns as well. Here's what I'm concerned about. Because they may look at you and go, they're different, right? There's the, they're, they're, they're special, I don't know. They have this opinion of you that when you authentically articulate, yeah, this is, so this is what I'm concerned about. And then that allows connection to happen between, between the two of you or between, between the group. You've seen this happen where somebody lets their guard down, they're you know, vulnerable or however we describe that, and we connect with them on a deeper level. And, and then people go, oh, thank God it's not just me. I thought I was mm -hmm. the only one, right? And you're not, you're not the only one. We're all, you know, we're, we're all, we all have our own concerns, even in the best of times. And so the more we can listen for the concerns of others, once we've got our own out of the way, we can really be there for people, we can hear them. And we may not be able to do anything about that concern, but just listening to people and saying, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, I have that concern too, if that's, if that's what's there to say. You don't have to fix it. You just have to like get it. And then is there anything, and is there any way I can support you? Great, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, we do have a question. Okay. It looks like more like a comment. Um, they took a lot of notes, especially the idea of identifying your concerns and instead of just reacting, set it aside, pause and drill down to clarify it and look for creative solutions or different paths. That was very helpful. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, someone else did say, um, you know, change is scary. Um, they love the comment you made about leaders uh, are there to navigate into the 
very impactful. Great. Well, this, um, it, it, there's obviously, or, well, obviously, <laughs> what, am, what am I trying to say? So this has only been an hour, right? And so there's only so much that's been, a can, we can accomplish in an hour. <clears throat> and many, much of it is kind of at a high level. Now, if, if I was in a room with people, I might actually, you know, drill down into some things, especially if there was, if there was more time available so that that could be made more real for others. And that's why I'm inviting people to, um, to reach out to me. Um, I will be providing information on, on what that program looks like and how it might work for you to be, um, to be involved in that so that we really can get into the nuts and bolts of it. Um, but if you really you know, took notes, or, and, and, and particularly if you saw something that you could then act on, that's a key component. If you saw, oh, I could do this, then keep that in mind and, and act on that. And that, like I said before, you take one step, the view changes slightly. And then, and then you see something you didn't see before, and then you, you can take that next step. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jim. We appreciate you speaking today so much. And um, there will be a copy of this video. So we right. turn that out. Bro, thank you so much. It was really, I really had a great time, even though it was <laughs> just me, but I, I could, you know, you know, there's people out there. So yes. it's great <laughs> than just talking to the wall. So. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for, for your for your psychic uh, attention. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Jim. All right. Have a great day. You too. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Thank you.